Pretty much all end user devices today are configured to get an IP address automatically so that they can get on the network. By end user devices, I mean like our desktops, our laptops, our tablets, our phones. For example, this computer here, if I go to the properties of the network card, and I go to the properties of IP version 4, you can see it's configured to obtain, obtain an IP address automatically. So that means it's going to look for what's called a DHCP server in order to get its IP address. DHCP stands for Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol, and it basically makes it so that we don't have to manually configure each device to get on the network. So let's connect to a DHCP server here. I've got my remote server administration tools installed on this Windows 10 machine. And I'm going to launch my DHCP snap-in. I'll just right click on it, click on add server. And I'm going to go ahead and connect to DHCP02. You can see I've got a couple of DHCP servers on my network. And let's expand it out. I'm going to expand out IP version 4. You can see there's two sections, IP version 4 and IP version 6. IP version 4 is still the most used today. So we have something called a scope, and we'll talk more about that in a second. But let's drill into it here. We have an address pool. So these are the addresses that our DHCP server is going to hand out. So our address pool actually consists of all IP addresses between 192.168.6.170 and 192.168.6.185. So when a new computer connects to the network, it's going to hand out one of the IP addresses in this range. And when it hands it out, that's called an address lease. And we can take a look at our address leases here. We can see one computer, desktop 205, received the IP address of 192.168.6.181. And if I had more computers on my network that were using DHCP, we would see them here, and they would have different IP addresses that this DHCP server handed out. Now, in addition to IP addresses, our DHCP server hands out things like default gateway and DNS servers. These are called options. So I'm going to go to scope options here, and you can see router. This is our default gateway, 192.168.6.1, and these are the DNS servers on my network. This way, our computer that is a DHCP client, it's called, and let's go back to that computer. If I go to a command prompt and do an IP config space slash all, this way it has that configuration. So it got the IP address, 192.168.6.281. It got the subnet mask from the DHCP server. It also got the default gateway. We saw that in the options, as well as the DNS servers. So all that was configured automatically by our DHCP server, and we can see which one configured it here, 192.168.6.227. That's actually DHCP02, the one we've been looking at. So now that this client has all this information, it can get on the network. In addition to that, it can contact a DNS server to resolve names like google.com and get out on the Internet. So let's go back to our DHCP server and talk a little bit more about a lease. So when a, a DHCP server hands out a lease, it says, okay, you can use this IP address for or up until this amount of time, the lease expiration. And once this lease expires, if you haven't renewed it by then, which our DHCP clients do automatically, then I'm going to reclaim this IP address and hand it out to another DHCP client. And that's what makes it possible so that the DHCP server does not run out of IP addresses, so it can reuse them. So now let's go back and talk, what a, talk about what a scope is here. So a scope is for a particular subnet. And we'll explain subnets very briefly here, but if you want to learn more about subnets, please go to itdvds.com. We've got tons of training on what a subnet is, how they work, what subnet masks are exactly, and a ton of other training. But real quick, so a subnet is short for subnetwork. And it's separated by a what's called a layer 3 device, which is normally, in our case, a router, to keep it simple. So if you're at home, you're connected to the Internet, you most likely had to go buy a router, and that got you connected to the Internet. Or there's the potential that your Internet provider supplied you with a router, and all your desktops and laptops and other devices you have at home connect to that router in order to get onto the Internet. Well, everything that's connected to that router is in its own subnet. And when you communicate out to the internet, you go to a different subnet in order to do that. And that's where your default gateway comes in. Your default gateway is an interface on your router. So when you communicate outside of your subnet, it's your computer sends the packets of information to the default gateway, which is your router, and then the router sends those on to other subnets in order to reach its destination. So most companies have multiple subnets in their environment. 
For example, here we've got subnet A, and this is a router here. This is a switch. So remember, our subnets are separated by routers. So this is one subnet, and then it goes to another router, and we got another subnet over here and another subnet over here. So each of these subnets would be its own scope in DHCP. So at home, you probably only have one subnet. So your DHCP server, which is normally your router also, only has one scope. So if we go back to our DHCP server here, we can see I've got a scope for the subnet 192.168.6 and 192.168.7. And in our case, what this means for this particular scope, any IP address that starts with a 192.168.6 is in this subnet. Any IP address that starts with a 192.168.7 would be in this subnet. So let's say I want my DHCP server to hand out IP addresses for subnet C here, which is 192.168.5. And the slash 24 has to do with the subnet mask, and a slash 24 is 255.255.255.0. So let's go over to our DHCP server and create a new scope for that particular subnet. I'm just gonna right click on IP version four, go to new scope, let's click next. And I can give it whatever name I'd like. I like to keep it kind of consistent where it's kind of descriptive here. This way I know that this particular scope is for this particular subnet. I could give a description if I'd like. Click Next. Here's where we're going to specify the IP range. Now this is the IP addresses that are going to be in the address pool. So it's the IP ranges that are IP addresses that our DHCP server is actually going to hand out. So let's say I want to hand out .5 to .100 and 192.168.5 to .200. So the other IP addresses that are in this subnet, it's not going to hand those out. Maybe I'm setting those statically on other computers. And down here I've got my subnet mask. You can see this is where the slash 24 is and this is how it's written normally when we see it when we're configuring a network adapter. So I'll go ahead and click Next. We can also do exclusions. What exclusions are is if there's any IP addresses in this range that we don't want the DHCP server to hand out, we can create an exclusion for it and then it won't hand out those IP addresses. So I'll go ahead and click next. This is where we can specify our least duration. This has to do with, okay, when this DHCP server hands out an IP address, that lease is good for or will expire. The default is eight days after it hands it out. So if we have clients disconnecting and connecting on a regular basis, a lot of times we want to make the lease a lower duration so that we don't run out of IP addresses. So I'll go ahead and click Next. And here if we want, we can configure some scope options. This is going to be some common scope options. I'll go ahead and configure those now. Click Next. So the first one is going to be the default gateway, and that is 192.168.5.1 for this particular subnet. This is normally your router's interface. Go ahead and click Next. We could specify the, the domain if we have one, as well as DNS servers. I'm going to use my DNS servers as 192.168.6.100 and 192.168.6.101. So when our DHCP server hands out the IP address, it's also going to hand out this other information, like these DNS servers, this parent domain, as well as the default gateway. I'll go ahead and click Next. If I had any Win servers, I could add those. Activating the scope means making it active. So when we do that, it's going to start handing out those IP addresses. I'll go ahead and click Next and Finish. And there it is. And now we can see it. There's our address pool from .100 to .200. I don't have any leases yet because there haven't been any DHCP clients that have connected. But once they do, we would see the lease here. And here's the scope options we set up in that Great New Scope wizard. So you'll notice we have three scopes here. So this DHCP server is handing out IP addresses for three different subnets. So it's handing out IP addresses for subnet E here, subnet D, and subnet C. But our DHCP server here is over here in a different subnet. Now one important thing to know about DHCP is that when a DHCP client gets on a network and asks for an IP address, asks to find a DHCP server, it's called a broadcast, and a broadcast does not get past a router. So let's say this client here broadcasts out, says, hey, is there a DHCP server on the network? The broadcast goes out. It'll hit this computer and any other computers that are on the net on this particular subnet. But once it hits the router, the router is going to drop that packet. So in order for that DHCP request to get out 
and go to our DHCP server, we need to configure something called a DHCP relay agent. What the DHCP relay agent does is it would be on this particular subnet and it would say, okay, I can forward your request over to the DHCP server and then the DHCP server can send that information back to you. So that's an important thing to know and can be, sometimes be confusing when we're first learning about DHCP. So I hope this quick start video was helpful and if you want to learn more about DHCP, how to set up DHCP relay agents and other advanced DHCP configurations, please go to itdvds.com.